African drums are talking. A message booms through the night. Black warriors steal from their huts and slink silently by secret paths to the hidden juju grove. One by one, they take their place around the altar. Shining ebony bodies, statues of silence squatting in the flickering light of the sacrificial fire. The witch doctor rises. The drum falters, changes its note, and the faster, wilder rhythm causes the circle of black bodies to sway to its urge. This is Africa. After an old woman has warned them repeatedly to beware the eyes of the moon, the professor's party makes its way through the long grass toward a village where ceremonial drums are beating. The natives are grouped around a huge fire. A beautiful girl wearing a leopard skin that hangs from her head and down her back is moving with cat-like steps in a ceremonial dance. She is the witch of the moon. Before their eyes, she is apparently changed into a leopard, and the beast charges toward the watchers in the shadow. The animal bounds between them and pauses, snarling. It eyes the party one by one, but seeing Jack, the snarls turn to cat-like purrs. Lorna's voice, calling for Jack to shoot, angers the beast, and it bounds away again, snarling. Then out of the long grass where the leopard disappears comes the beautiful girl. She speaks to the party, looks at Jack with a strange look, then leaves them to enter again the native circle. Jack seems to be in a trance. He tries to follow the girl, saying that her eyes had commanded him to do so, but Nguru holds him back. Steady, Jack. Steady. Let me go, I tell you. It was written on the moon. I saw it. Her eyes to Buana, me. moon witch, evil I look for little Buana. Let me go. Why do you interfere? Jack, dear, look at me. We were told to wait. Tell this man to let me go. Don't I... worry, Lola. It's a fever. Sets up all sorts of imaginings. But the woman and that leopard. Her eyes were exactly the same as the animals when it looked at us. Yes. Her eyes. The old woman told us to beware the eyes of the moon. And they call that girl the witch of the moon. Yes. Yes, I... I told you. Her eyes. Buana. Little Buana. How was he? Huh, huh. Go sleep. Uh, Jack's fainted. Oh. We'll have to get him into a hut and doctor him. The girl's beckoning to his father. She spoke to the witch doctor, then raised her arm in this direction. There, she's calling us again. Can you carry Jack and Guru? Mm-hmm. All right, I'll lead the way. You follow behind me, Lorna. Come on. Whatever you do, don't show fear. Keep your head up high. All right, Father. I'll try. They're making a path through the circle for us. Keep looking straight ahead as we go through. And strangers are not welcome at this season. But my father told me of your coming, and I have made preparation. Your father has eyes that see into the future, woman. Tell me his name. He lives in the hole in the sky, through which Mshimba and Shamba watches the earth. And his name in your tongue is called the moon. Hmm. Then his eyes are indeed far-seeing. This man here is Milini, the witch doctor. I see you, Milini. I see you, white man. His medicines are powerful and his knowledge is great. Let him attend to the sick man. Oh, cool. But I see that Milini himself is sick. His arm has a wound close to the shoulder. I have a medicine that is powerful in such cases... Let my sick man be taken to a hut where my daughter may care for him. And I will bind Malini's arm so that the stiffness will go from it. Mijama Hayo. It is well. Follow me and Malini will come to the hut for your medicine. God. Oh, no. Did you see that wound in the witch doctor's arm? Unless I'm very much mistaken, a rifle bullet did that not two hours ago. You think someone shot him purposely? Maybe. Probably there are some more white people around here besides us. But we'd have heard the shot if it had happened within the last two hours. Yes. 
Yes, I guess we would have at that. Huh. Drums have stopped. I guess the ceremony is over. This is the hut that has been prepared for you. The next hut has been made ready for the woman, according to the white man's custom. By what name are you called? I am called Ifabi, daughter of the moon. Ifabi, you have learned the customs of the white man well. Who has taught you? Am I not the daughter of the moon? And does my father not know the customs of all people of the earth? Hmm. Yes, maybe so. There's an oil lamp burning in here. And I suppose your father taught you how to make that ship's lantern, eh? <laughs> and Goro, put Jack on that bed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, take his boots off and wrap him in those blankets. Open the medicine kit, Lorna. Right. If Hobby, you will send a boy with boiling water for Malini when he is ready. Yes. What man? There is a law which you will keep while you stay in our hut. And that is? No leopard shall be killed unless it attacks. Why is that? They are our men. I go for Melini. Did you hear what she said, Father? Yes. The leopards are their menfolk. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's hot in here. Oh, Jack, dear. Do you feel better? Yes, I... I go to sleep... Gosh, I don't want these blankets no, around no, me. No, 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 no. Stay where you are, Jack. Here, drink this. Well, these blankets, sir, I don't need them. Well, I'm afraid you do, my boy. You've been out for the last half hour. Out? What do you mean? I guess there is something wrong. I don't recognize this place. Drink the medicine, Jack. You can think afterwards. Yes. Oh, that's vile stuff. Well, I didn't have time to call at the drugstore for flavoring, my boy. You don't have to kid me, sir. I'm beginning to remember things. The witch doctor, that woman who changed into a leopard. Lily is here, white man. Oh, bring him in. Tell him to sit over there. The water? It is here. Shusha and Kema. Toroka. I see the young white man is well again. Yes, I... I hope I didn't cause much trouble. And Guru carried you in, dear. How do you feel now? Fine, just as if I'd had a good sleep. It is well for men to sleep when the moon is full grown. Lusty Fabi steal a brain. Oi, Rati Tulia! Nidini is sick from his wound. He speaks of the ceremony. Is the white man's medicine good, Milini? It has a devil in it that burns. Yeah, this is a clean bullet hole through the flesh. Didn't touch the bone. Hmm. You know, it looks uncommonly like a Winchester. What man's gun did this, Melini? The white man should know. Melini was standing in the mouth of the cave when his gun spoke. Father, you remember? The leopard. Yes. Yes, of course, but good heavens. Uh, give me a bandage, Lorna. Don't stand there looking like... Them. No, 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 no. A wider one. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, good thing this wound is fairly clean. Where's Nguru? He slipped out just now. The great black warrior is talking with his devils in the forest. He has a devil that shines when he speaks. Mm. Yeah, that ought to fix you, Malini. Return tomorrow when the sun is three hours old. The medicine will grow weak. I will make it strong again. The white man's gun will speak at no more leopard? No. That is... Uh... They will not attack. Melini will make Ndoa. Hmm. Oh, Fabi. Yes, white man. What do the people say to our coming? They look upon you as sacred, seeing that I, Fabi, brought you out of nowhere. Hmm. Well, that's that. Now we've got some time to think. I'm sorry I was so abrupt just now, Lorna. Only we mustn't let these happenings get into our brains. Same thing applies to you, Jack. Yes, sir, I know. You remember what I told you quite some time ago. Accept Africa, and Africa will accept you. Many men have gone mad because their ego has been turned upside down and inside out by witnessing such things, inexplicable things as we've seen tonight. Yes, but, Father... I know, the whole thing is preposterous to us. Let's discuss these happenings as cold facts. You feel up to it, Jack? Yes, I feel as good as ever. Mm-hmm. All right, then. In the first place, we know that this place was prepared for us. 
We saw no one except leopards on the way here. Cats were everywhere. Now, what did you notice about the woman, Ifabi, when she was apparently changed into a leopard? Well, she was put into that coffin-like box in which the doctor put the cover on it. Then those leopard men carried the box to the fire. Now, just a minute. The box was left lying there for a few minutes before they picked it up. Yes, they performed some rites around it. Good. Then they picked it up and took it to the fire and with a long stick shoved it into the fire. Yes. Well, go on. What did you see next? Well, a leopard screamed and jumped out of the fire. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The next part is very vivid and yet decidedly muddled. The beast came straight to where we were hiding and stopped looking at us. Jack, when it started walking toward you, making that purring noise, what do you remember? What impressions did you get? Her eyes, they seemed to... Oh, it's all so idiotic, sir. They were yellow and slanting, and yet they... Yet they were the eyes of a woman. Yes. Hmm. Well, that's enough for the present. Come on, Lorna. I'll go along to your hut with you. Let's get some rest. All right, Father. Good night, Jack. Good night, dear. You won't have to worry, I guess. Guru will camp on your doorstep tonight. I hope he does. I'll feel safer. Good night. Good night, dear. The moon's still bright. Somehow I... Father. Hmm? Look. That leopard. Sitting looking at us. Those yellow eyes. It's... It's that woman. Look out. It's going to spring. 